Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. Today we have Netflix 338th film from 2021. It's the family adventure film called Finding Ohana. It's directed by Jude Wang and stars Kia Piahu, Alex Iono, Lindsay Watson, Owen Vaccaro, and Kelly Hu. I'm Jesse, and I am your host. Thank you, as always, for joining me today. This episode, as always, will have some spoilers. So if this is one of the Netflix original films that you haven't seen and you're interested in checking it out, give us a pause and come back a little bit later on because we will spoil this as we go. And we do start the show with the fast flicks where we kick off with a little summary of what the film is all about. So this one, it's about two teenagers who are visiting their homeland of Hawaii and they find a treasure map and they go on an adventure to better their lives with a little help from some new friends. Uh, yeah, this <laughs> we're probably going to talk about this many times, but this takes lots of inspiration from sort of those uh, nice 1980s sort of uh, family films that, you know, those cult classics that you'd remember, like, you know, your Indiana Jones and your Goonies, and and yeah, we'll probably talk about it a little bit more, but that's, that's where this one sits, so this isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea, I understand that, uh, but hopefully you're going to stick around because we'll talk about how this one ended up on Netflix, so the the film Netflix announced was a part of their Representation Matters collection because obviously this is a very diverse cast um, set in Hawaii and covers a lot of culture as well, which is quite a nice thing to sort of see. If we look at the translations for this one around the world, so in Portuguese, it's called Ohana, a magnificent treasure. And I guess probably we need to sort of say in Hawaiian, Ohana is, is about family. So, um, I guess, you know, finding Ohana means many things in relation to to this film, uh, the, the English title, because it's about finding family. It's about finding yourself, finding out who you are. And Yes, they do go on a treasure hunt, and that treasure hunt helps them find their family, but I think the focus for treasure for any of these international titles is sort of a, a minimal uh, sort of thing that matters realistically. Uh, in French, it's called Ohana, sorry, Ohana, or The Hidden Treasure, again. Um, German, it's called Adventure Ohana. Takes out that, you know, that finding who you are um, title as well. In Greek, it's called Ohana, The Hawaiian Treasure. In Hungarian, Ohana, In Search of the Real Treasure. Japanese, it's just Ohana. I like that. That's that's a nice title. In Polish and Vietnamese, it's called Ohana, the most precious treasure. That's not bad. <laughs> In Russian, it's called Ohana, quest for the treasure. Chinese, Ohana, the search for family heirlooms. In Turkish, it's called real treasure. <laughs> um, and the working title for this film was the Untitled Jude Wang Project. So obviously, um, you know, the, this was this was a big film uh, when it came out. The tagline for this film, home is where Ohana is. Yes, obviously we know that where um, your family is, that's where your home. So that's a nice little tagline as well. This was um, announced in September of 2019. Uh, Netflix said they picked up the rights to Jude Wang's feature film debut with Christian Strain writing the film. And it was sort of uh, being a Goonies-esque adventure movie starring mostly daters. Interesting. Um, all of the this, this film, it, it's filmed across a variety of different locations. I mean, there's scenes in Brooklyn, uh, in New York. There's scenes in Hawaii. They filmed in Thailand as well as the Dominican Republic. So a bit of a worldwide adventure for this one. The interior cave shots in this film, they're all done in Thailand because if they had a film in Hawaii, and they mentioned this in the film, that caves in Hawaii, they're called kapu, which is sacred ground. So they didn't want to, you know, go against culture. And so they actually filmed in, in Thailand. So I thought that was a quite little interesting sort of thing. In Feb of 2022, so this is obviously, uh, you know, 12 months after the film came out. It came out on the 29th of January 2021. But in 2022 of Feb, Entertainment Weekly, they did an interview with Kihu Kwan. And this was a bit of a surprise for me that he was in this film. But he recounted how he got his role in this film after two decades of working behind the scenes instead of in front of the camera. And obviously... We said before this is based on the Goonies and Indiana Jones, and he's in both those films. But he said that I did find I did finding Ohana after I got the role of Waymond for Everything Everywhere All at Once. The reason I got finding Ohana was that I was with some friends, and one of my friends started talking about the director Jude Wang. I'm listening to this conversation, and I hear Jude Wang talking about how she's getting ready to do a movie for Netflix called Finding Ohana. It's kind of like Indiana Jones meets the Goonies. I'm hearing this and I'm like, wait a minute, I think I'm in both of those movies. So I got up and I introduced myself and four months later, I got a call from her saying, hey, would you like to be a part of this? It was a small role, but it was a really nice and much needed warm up for everything everywhere. So I was just really happy to do it. So a nice little um, comment there from, from him in relation to his role in this film. 
Uh, so, so, yeah, I mentioned this came out on the 29th of January 2021. Lots of different filming locations. It did have three nominations at award ceremonies. There was a nomination for Owen Vaccaro for Best Performance in a Streaming Film Role for a Teen Actor at the Young Artist Awards and for Jude Wang for Best Hawaii Film at the Hawaiian Film Critics Society. It was also put on that reframe narrative and animated animated feature list, which we've seen quite often on this show. What are the critics and audiences saying about this film? Rotten Tomatoes sits at 82% on 22 reviews. So that is definitely fresh from the critics. The audience, very similar at 80%. That's on more than 500 ratings, so very solid there. IMDb sits at a 6.1 out of 10 on 12,000 ratings. Not a lot of ratings, really. I thought probably would have been more, but 12,000 ratings on IMDb. Letterboxd, again, just under 10,000 ratings. It's at a 2.7 out of 5, for pro- so probably the lowest out of all of them. It has been logged by 15,000 people there, though. And Metacritic, not many people either. In the traffic light system, they run the green, yellow, or red. The critics have it at a 69 out of 100 on 7 reviews, so that is green on that traffic light system. The audience has it as 6.5, so a little bit lower. That's out of 10 on eight reviews, but also in that green on the traffic light system. So overall, you'd have to say fairly positive for this film, even though not many people have uh, logged it on on social medias. But one of my early thoughts, the all-important statement from me, I think that the obvious references uh, to Indiana Jones and the Goonies, they might seem a little bit on the nose for some people. It's like you're watching the same movie at times, but this is obviously made for a new generation who probably don't have the attention span to watch, you know, inserted commas, old films. <laughs> so, you know, this is updated to a Wi-Fi world and, and it's very enjoyable. I thought this was really well done. So let's talk about the characters. Let's talk about the, the people in this film. Pilly is our main main character. We start off with her doing this, you know, race through New York with her friends on a bike, doing this geocaching um, sort of activity. And, and she's obviously very confident in herself and wins this and all that sort of stuff and excited to go on this camp to do it. She's obviously adventurous. She loves this geocaching. She likes connecting with her friends and learning new things. And I think it's clear that she loves her home in New York. Um, but that idea, she's not too against this Hawaiian culture that, that's a part of her family as well. Her brother, her brother E, who we'll talk about in a second, but he's always on her nerves. Uh, and apart from the fear of swimming, I don't think there's, there's much else that sets her aside. She's very keen to to try new things. So E, or Ioni is his uh, Hawaiian name, is the complete opposite of her, I guess. He's, he's, he's a little bit older, obviously, but very selfish and, and arrogant and, and really only cares about himself and his future. He, he doesn't really change much throughout this film. Um, And he still ends up with the girl at the end, which is a little bit of a joke for me. I think that, you know, he acknowledges his culture as he go as the film goes by and and his real name. So that's a nice little touch. But apart from that, I mean, there's very little selflessness from this guy, I think. uh, And that scene through Hana, who is the the love interest that they introduce for him. She's a very strong, independent, smart, young individual who's sort of almost loses those characteristics because of the the role that she's given of this love interest of E. Like, you know, we see she wants to get into Juilliard. She, she likes to sing, but she's also worried about getting homesick too. And I don't know, I just felt like putting those two together at the end of this film, and I've already said spoilers, but having them together just defeats the purpose of her being a strong character. Uh, the other sidekick that's introduced into the film is, is Casper. He's this little redheaded bookworm sort of kid who loves cats and he's almost the equivalent of philly and a little bit younger and and there to support her and her quest and her her journey to you know find this treasure or, or work out who her family is and, and her role in the world uh the other the other two characters that play these little roles are, is obviously uh, philly and e's mother uh, leilani and uh you know she's a workaholic she doesn't so she doesn't really have much time for them and part of this i guess is because their dad and her husband has passed away he was a a a war veteran and and obviously that's impacted her massively in her ability to to support and and supply for the family too and that's why they've had to move away from this hawaiian culture that is very very important for her father who's the other or the last character we'll talk about chemo uh he's he's connected to his homeland of hawaii and obviously getting on in age and and having some falls and has a heart attack and this this brings the family back to visit him and he's he's sad because obviously the film's titled ohana and and his his daughter's moved away and family means so much to him and and he's very sad that you know his daughter hasn't shared the hawaiian lifestyle with his grandchildren so that that's his side story and and a very important character in this film as well 
The director, Jude Wang, uh, 41 directing credits, so an awful lot of directing credits, and this is her featured debut, so obviously she's had to have done something that hasn't been filmed, and, and that, you know, when you look into it, television is where she's sort of made her mark, and, you know, a lot of big-name television shows, even if it's only one or two episodes, but that Frasier reboot, she's done Quantum Leap, Only Murders in the Building on Disney+, Plus, The Connors, Shameless, The Good Place... Two Broke Girls, so a lot of these big sort of shows that, you know, the last 10 years have, have done really well, and obviously that's where she's sort of stood out, and, and people have gone, cool, let's give you a chance with this film. It's time to talk about some scenes. What are some scenes in this film that I enjoyed? What didn't I like in this film? Obviously, we always start with the good things, so, so things that I like. There's, there's a scene where, um, at the start, Philly, there she's on Hawaii, um, the Hawaiian Islands with her family, and she's sort of daydreaming about this treasure hunt, and Casper, that redhead kid, sort of sneaks up on her sort of surprises her and she sort of takes him down physically and says you can't sneak up on new yorkers i thought that was quite funny i thought that was a good little line when um kehu kwan comes on the screen for the first time that just surprised me i really enjoyed seeing his face and going that's awesome i like seeing him here uh philly and casper they go to koala valley which a lot of people if you've been to hawaii you can do so many tours the big films that are filmed in hawaii you know jurassic park this is where you go to see the you know the fields from jurassic park and uh, you know, they, they talk about films that have been made there, especially um, the television show as well, Lost, which if you go back to sort of the start of our podcast, you'd know that this is my favorite television show of all time almost. So they stop in front of this sign of Lost, which which was great. And they make the joke about the ending. I just love that. I thought that was awesome. Uh, there's a scene where Pump It Up by Black Eyed Peas comes on. I don't know why I've been listening to a bit of Black Eyed Peas lately. So I thought that was cool that it came on. So this montage, that works really well. Pump It Up. Um... Then we had a scene with Philly and E, brother and sister. They're looking at a photo of their parents on their wedding day. Obviously, we know that the dad's passed away. And Philly's sort of, you know, she's really sad because she doesn't have any memories of their dad, whereas the older brother is a bit older, so he obviously does. And then, you know, to add it or to end it in a humorous tone, uh, she sort of asks, you know, if the photo was the last time that their mum shaved her legs. I thought that was quite funny. There's a scene where uh, Lelaney and Chemo, they're in the hospital. He's obviously had this uh, health scare she's there looking out for him and you know they're, they're backwards and forwards with disagreements throughout this film and there's this moment where they hold hands and go we've got to make it right and, and you know this this backwards and forwards um between the two of them apologizing was, was really good especially with you know that idea that how can i teach the kids ohana if i don't have a relationship with my own daughter i thought that was excellent and then the spirits there's i, I think there's some people that probably don't like this but towards the end the spirits uh, come towards this hut where the kids and, and Leanne are, are all hiding and it's sort of a reveal that the dad was a fallen warrior and then they all hug as a family and this is sort of that closing moment for for Philly to be like, this is my dad, I can see what he looks like. I thought that was good as well. Um, what didn't I like about this film? There's not a lot. I think there's a scene where E, you know, I sort of mentioned this before anyway, but that idea of E and Hana having this love interest. So their first sort of meeting, uh, he opens the door and, and Hana's there to see his sister and... It's like in super slow-mo and she drops some stuff and catches them in slow-mo and you can tell, you know, with the, the male gaze that he's in love with her straight away. I just thought it was really poor as well as the the way that he treats Caspar and, and sort of, you know, puts him down in front of her, calling him like gingerbread to impress her. I mean, she calls him out on it, but at the same time, I don't know, it just wasn't needed. And the only other thing I didn't like in this, um, Ian Hana at the end they've got their their moment in a in a cupboard in the hospital they're kissing i just didn't want them together that that really annoyed me <laughs> um some themes some ideas in this one what this film what's this film trying to say like obviously this film is about hawaii it's about the hawaiian culture it's about heritage it's about food it's about family it's about friendships beliefs honoring the dead obviously like we've said before ahana it means family so th so that's a really key thing in this film there's a little bit about, you know, troubled siblings too, that, that idea about trying to work out how to get along and, and work together and, and respect each other and not have to bicker all the time. And, and true, like, you know, you've got to think about making things right. This is Treasure Hunt is a little bit about greed. And we get these flashbacks throughout the film of almost like a drunk history sort of moment of, of what happened with um, the settlers when they, when they had the treasure and, and greed. It's obviously not the way to live. So a couple of nice things there for, for a younger audience to take away from this film. Uh, and what else did I take away from this film myself? I think the the idea that um, geocaching is such a big thing for the youth, I, I don't know, it surprised me. Uh, my only sort of knowledge of, of this sort of world and our experience, I guess, is with uh, Pokemon Go. <laughs> Pokemon Go uses the, I'm pretty sure they, they set it up based on some geocaching um, locations. But apart from that, I, I don't know if it's actually a big thing or not. Um, and I'm not going to look into it. So interesting thing for me. 
some questions, some pondering, some ideas. Uh, Megan Trainer. <laughs> She, she gets a big moment. Uh, we have Hana and E in the car at some stage, and obviously they're discussing that you know she wants to be a singer, and the song comes on, and she sings, and it's like embarrassing because he knows the song too. Like Megan Trainor is a pop culture reference. Is that is that something that's going to stick if you watch this film in ten years time? Because for me, like this film's a couple of years old now, and it even seems dated for me now. So I thought that was an interesting song choice. Uh, Hawaii. Like, how beautiful is Hawaii? I mean, you just look at the, the images in this film and it's just like, how good is that place? Um, I mean, the today as I'm recording, I watched uh, 51st States with uh, Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore and, and obviously that film is 20 years old, a bit over 20 years old. So, uh, you know, the, the scenery is still the same, but just seeing it so vividly in this, you know, recent film that with the, the top end sort of cameras to highlight it, the, the scenery, I just thought, you know, it's such a beautiful place. I mean, if you've been, I've been there, I've been lucky enough to have been there twice. Um, and, you know, I've loved both times I've been there. And I, I love the I love the place so much. I even proposed to my wife there too. So Hawaii does have a very special place uh, in my heart for me too. I hope it does for other people too. But anyway, let's wrap this up. Let's, let's give the film a rating out of five and see what we come up with. So for me, I think that, you know, like there's some really good representation in this film with that idea of Hawaiian culture too, playing such a big role. It's something that you don't often see, which is really nice. And I think... While there are some scenes that will probably be a little bit too scary for real young kids, like spiders and dark caves and fear and that sort of stuff, this is a perfect sort of film for for those heading towards high school almost to find out, you know, to think about, you know, when you're trying to form your identity and who you are, how do you do that? Do you do that through your family? Do you do that through your culture? So for me, solid film, three and a half out of five. I'm giving that. We're on socials. We have Instagram. We have Facebook. And we have X, formerly known as Twitter. The question for social media this week, I just wanted to put out there that idea, like, do you have a close connection to your family's heritage? I think that's a, a really impactful sort of thing that if you can teach your kids the heritage or the culture of your, your your family past that gives them something to to strive for or something to be proud of especially if there's positives um in that that lineage or, or that that heritage of your family too as always we're back next week we are we're back next week with a 2021 film this is a british film it's a drama called the dig this one's directed by simon stone and stars carrie mulligan ralph fiends lily james johnny flynn ben chaplin ken stott archie barnes and monica doolan so pretty good cast there interest i haven't I, I do not even remember this film there's no no recollection of it at all so um i'm excited to give that one a watch and, and come back next week with some uh thinkings as always thank you for joining me today for this one hope you've enjoyed it give us a five star rating on your favorite podcast platform if you can it will help us to be heard by more people and i will see you next week